Hello and welcome to the Fabulous at 50 podcast, celebrating a vibrant global community of women over 50 through entertaining interviews that will inspire, educate, and empower. Your host, Joanne Nuaduck, was born to nurture and promote vibrance. Joanne is both the Community Director for Calgary, Canada, and oversees the global operations for Fabulous at 50. As an oncology nurse, integrative practitioner in multiple modalities, life skills mentor and manager, Joanne moves people from challenging situations to positive outcomes through the use of her innate gifts and learned skills. Here's your host, Joanne Nuaduck. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. It is quite a treat, not just for you, but for me, because I am changing seats. I am moving over to being the interviewed E, the guest on my own show, because I am here with my dear friend who is the producer of this show. She is an entertainer extraordinaire and an incredible holistic voice coach. And today she is going to be the host and the interviewer for Fabulous at 50. And the reason she is doing this is because she was the one that said, Joanne, you need to read your story on one of our podcast episodes so that I can interview you. And I'm going to hand it over to her now and you can find out why. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome, Sandy. Thank you, Joanne. I appreciate this. And thank you for being so open to the idea of something like this. You know, yeah. uh, yes. And and we'll get a little bit more into, you know, kind of the behind the scenes of, of that statement. Um, but yes, it's been fantastic in uh, working with you. I was looking back, actually, I think it's been about three years that we have been working with this podcast, by the way. So yeah. it's off and on in different incarnations. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So I'm loving being a part of the evolution and <clears throat> bringing it back to when we first met. Okay. So, and that being, I believe it was, uh, we connected in 2014, 2015 yeah. in a, a yeah. personal growth workshop. It was a series, actually, it was quite lengthy. Yes. Um, and this story had such an impact on me. And I can speak to a little bit more of that later, but I remembered it and how it came about and how it impacted my understanding of my own conditioning, my beliefs mm-hmm. that didn't serve me, my own coping strategies. So just a little foreshadowing there on the daring to written by Joanne Nuaduck. Mm. So I just wanted to check in with you just a, a little kind of fun start. Um, if MUD was an acronym, what would it stand for? Oh, okay. I had no idea what questions were coming. (laughs) Interesting acronym because I use, I've used mud more as an analogy, right? Of course. But if it was an acronym, um, let me see. Um, M-U-D. Like me under distress. My undeveloped dreams. That, yes, all of the above. That was good. Me under distress. Right. Yes. My undeveloped dreams would be also an an amazing, you're hired. You're hired. (laughs) (laughs) That that really would be what it is because the mud is, um, it really is that film. It's like people talk about, here's, here's how I came up with mud is I often take sort of mainstream uh, colloquialism, shall we call them? And I go, well, that doesn't really make sense to me. And I come up with my own. So people talk about baggage, they have baggage. And I'm like, well, baggage is something you're carrying around, but it's a little more conscious. Like you're carrying it in your hands. Just put it down for God's sakes is my, the way I take it. Right. Right. But mud is more like it gets on you and it's like this icky film, this stress, but it, it really, when I do talk about, you know, you rinse it off and then you get going. Well, when you do a quick rinse, it's not really off. And it can be to the point of anyone that's ever gone camping or in the woods for a while, you, you put up with different, you put up with things that you don't normally put up with. There's different, you know, and you, and you start to um, kind of like, yeah, yeah, well, it's just part of me. 
and we lose track of what's really part of us and what's not. So yeah, I, I love that. Or my unconscious distress. That's another one, right? You're saying about some things yeah. you, you might not be conscious of, right? So absolutely. So, so I just want to do a little aside here. Yes, yeah. exactly. So for those of you that might be watching part two of Daring Two, uh, Joanne's story, uh, you may want to go back and listen to part one, which is Joanne actually reading the story that she wrote, and it'll give you a lot of insights into this. But even if you're just tuning into this one, you'll get the gist of it as we go along. But it is a rich, rich story. So, um, <clears throat> yes, that you'll want to listen to. So do ch check out part one. Uh, so thank you for that, Joanne. That's cool. Um, now, you and I, with our connection, uh, I, I admire you. You're my friend. You're, you know, as you've mentioned, a colleague. We've we've done a lot of things together, side by side and interdependently. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to ask you, how do you view your wisdom now, in this now moment, between when you first wrote the story in 2015? Like what, what kind of wisdom has transpired since then? There was a lot of wonderful things that lot. came out of yeah. that story. And then, so just maybe in a few lines, tell me how you're feeling about your wisdom now. My wisdom in, now. Yeah, in your heart I and soul. I would say it has deepened. That it has deepened in the experiences. What, what that story shares a lot of were the, um, the turning points in my life. I share a couple stories where it was like, this is how I was. This is how I was trying on the new me. And now that has continued more. And I, I think that would be the best way to describe it because I do touch you in there that it was like daring to start a new relationship. Well, now we're like nine years along or so like it's, 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 a bit the difference here. I love analogies. It's a bit like if that was churning up, I'd already pulled out the weeds. I was churning up the garden. Now I'm tending it. Oh, beautiful. Right. So you went even from sowing a new garden, <clears throat> you know, planting a new garden into now you're it's you're harvesting amazing. or, yeah. you know, you're maintaining and enjoying. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Although there's still, there's always so still muck involved. <laughs> But from a different perspective, you know, I'm exactly. not in the mud all the time. I know when I'm in the mud as opposed to being in there and I didn't know. And just some of the other, I don't know, the other daringness, the other, yeah, I, I would say it's the tending to it and new opportunities, like walking into new, like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Right. Yeah. So a whole other unfolding. Of, yes. Yes. Other, other plants that may have come up. There we go. Have sprouted up exactly. Okay, so I'm I'm checking in with you too about are are we okay to get just a little more into your personal life with your family? Sure. Are Thank you, you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Depending on the questions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Hmm. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> So I just wanted to check in. Um, I'm sure that your your children, your your daughters and son, have read this chapter, and I just wondered about what their thoughts and feelings are about it, mm -hmm. and also too, do they have their own chapter that they have written? Interesting. So part one of that question, they have read it. And I don't know that they read it immediately, you know, like when I was writing it, when it came out. Um, but it was, um, it was quite moving, their responses. They were very proud of me. And yeah, moving. I'm going to get teary. How dare you? <laughs> no, I, you are love. I do. I really, it is something that has been reflected back to me through um, some beautiful cards and, you know, when it's mother's day card or birthday cards and stuff that my children, now that they're all, you know, they're in their twenties and now stepdaughters into their thirties. And, um, when 
like my own daughters read it more like my son's like, great job, you know, like that kind of thing. Whereas my daughters, they, they were, um, they, they appreciated seeing the shift because they know how hard things were, but they, I think they also appreciated that this isn't being written from a victim it wasn't a, this was all bad. And you know what I mean? Like from a blame I had, I had been able, and I was there, believe me, I was there. It's, but this was the transformation getting past that, getting past the hurt and past the blame and into um, a realm of new possibilities. And they both really appreciated that. I don't know how much they would have appreciated it younger in their teens, but now that they're, you know, they're grown women, they're young women, they're beautiful women. They really do appreciate it. Mm. And, and as far as their own chapter, I would say, yes, like that, that is their chapters to write. Um, in actual, are they journaling or writing their chapters? Uh, I don't know. That's their own, that's their personal journey, but I do see, I see that my own children, I am really proud of them. Oh my, (laughs) they, they don't hold bitterness. They have been able to get past, you know, the teenage angst and the hurt. And you never know how much of that is from like teenagehood (laughs) and how much of that is from the life circumstances. You know, uh, I, I don't, it doesn't matter what anyone says, you know, a family going through divorce is hard. Right. But what touched me is that they have been able to navigate their own relationships you know, mm-hmm. with their father and, and, and come out and have that on a, a positive, whatever it is, but I see them being very, I, I, I'm using the word tolerant, but not in the way of tolerant as, well, I'm just going to put up with shit, but I mean, tolerant as in, in like understanding everybody's on their journey and they're willing, accepting there, maybe that's a better word, accepting. Mm-hmm. I see them as very accepting to others in their life and very compassionate. And that just warms my heart that they're amazing human beings and mm-hmm. each on their own journey. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, and it sounds to me from, um, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's, it's acknowledging what's happening. So the awareness, you know, comes first and then being able to to navigate the way you did so with the you know this younger generation they're they're much more aware i find faster they're sooner in their lives and so coupled with that and your you know modeling and you just being organically authentically you in your journey and your healing process i think that is probably a huge you know reason for the success of your children so kudos to you and to them for following their hearts in you know moving forward on their personal journeys Mm, thank you you're welcome so good so we've kind of uh i've got a a double-edged sort of thing here so as you have also analogized about a coin there's one side of a coin that is you know there's two sides of the coin and you know both of them have their merits and both of them have their challenges. So um, what does failing mean to you? Ah, feeling what did, what did I'm going to do this in two parts because okay. there was my, my sense of failing back then versus now mm-hmm. is quite different. Mm-hmm um failing I there was a time when I really beat myself up about failing like it literally could be something as simple as I'm driving somewhere and I get stuck in traffic and I'm like I should have taken the other route right or I could have done and and fretting about it and being upset and that was very akin to a trait of perfectionism and that perfectionism to me I think is very um connected to a sense of if I'm not the best I can absolutely be, people won't love me. Right. Right. And so there's like this whole cascade of a mountain uh, of, of emotions that get wrapped up in that. And my mm-hmm. sense of failing that I talked about when I said, you know, releasing a sense of failing 
was say something on a bigger level might be a sense of failing of not a, a accomplishing a dream or, or ending a marriage or something along theirs, that failing was a sense of failure and that not good enough, or I didn't do well, like everything, all my efforts were for naught. Mm-hmm. That was my old sense of failing. Um, sense of failing now is I don't really think of the word. I don't use the word failing so much, but in the sense of failing is more of a mistake. And this is what we really got into with, um, the belief repairing that I'm trained in now is it's a mistake, right? So it didn't work. It's like, you know, if you're an actor, it's like take two, right? <laughs> take three. So, and so I it's like, well, that, that one didn't work. It is a chance to say, well, let me do it again, or let me do it in a different way. It's right. um, failing now to me is I've adopted, um, you know, Sue's Casey's term where it's kind of like, aren't I cute when I'm human? It is. <laughs> I love that. But I, I really took things hard. I really took, and, and, and I think people sometimes interpret people that, you know, it's like, oh, they always have to be right. When I, I have a lot of compassion for someone that feels like they have to be right. It's not that they want to be right over top of somebody. It's that they feel like they they don't have the latitude, the breadth, the ability to be wrong because something devastating will happen. It's like, it's a horrible responsibility to feel that you have to be right and that you have to get everything right. So and that's I, a whole layer of mud, if I can interject. Oh my that, God, right? that is like bucket. Yeah, bucket. Bring, bring that together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so when we wash that off, and so yeah, moving into now where, yeah. And the other, the flip side of the coin, you said cherish. Yes. <clears throat> so what does cherished mean to you? Yeah. And I use that word because I believe that you used that when you described your feeling, your uh, the reciprocal feeling of yourself and the man in your life. Yes. But it goes back further. There's a, there's twice used in this story. Ah, because okay. the first one is when I was in the thick of the mud and like, you know, in the you know, what was me type of thing, but I was still carrying a lot of hurt and pain from the relationship Mm. I came out of. And I can tell you, I wasn't feeling cherished by the end of our marriage. Right. Like, and that's typical. So when I was at an event at one point, I was chatting with this lady and I was, yeah, I was just sharing some things and she was talking and she's this most soft spoken dear lady. And she touched my arm and just said, you deserve to feel cherished. Right. And I swear to God, it was like, whoa, I was like, I wanted like tears were ready to welt up because it was like, I didn't even know what cherish meant then. I didn't, Mm. I couldn't even conjure that feeling up inside of me at the time. Wow. But I do now. And that's what cherished now is, is cherished is beyond just like, you can love someone, but cherished is, is not, it's not the putting someone up way on a pedestal because there's a distance to that. That is revering, you know, and it's not a it cherished is it's, it's kindred. It's like, um, it's something so special. There's love involved. There's caring, there's protectiveness, there's cheerleading. It is all of it. To me, cherish is all of it that you reciprocally want the best for that person and you want to support them doing it and they you. Right. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, sounds like a very deep synergy. Yes. You know, just yeah, yeah this beautiful combination of tapestries that have come together. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that is beautiful. Thank you for that. Oh, I love that. Yes, cherish is just one of my favorite words. Uh, So something else here, Um, having read your story out loud on camera and with a microphone live on video and audio podcast, how do you feel now about the process of using your voice in this way and being seen this way, reading this story? It's definitely a moment of being vulnerable. And, and that was something I 
struggled with in my past is because I had to put on a bit of, I have a different story and another one that goes a little bit more into how my suit of armor, shall we say, had been, and my strength, how I had built my strength was there to protect me, but it had become rigid and it can crumble. And when things are rigid, they crumble. But when we're truly strong, we can be flexible and so forth. And so it was interesting because this isn't, I mean, I've shared the story when I put it out, I'll say when I hit send on the, on the actual draft, I was shaking in my boots because this was the first time I'm sharing these stories and, and being vulnerable. And because lots of time, you know, I was sharing stuff that people didn't know about me. Right. Because some time has lapsed now, it was the stories themselves. It was less, that was not so much the vulnerability, but it was literally like, okay, I'm going to read in public. This is be my second time because I read a Christmas story before, right? The, the night before, it was the night before Christmas. Um, that was a vulnerable moment because I don't find myself a, a very proficient out loud reader. And it was something that we could go right back into school that I was the kid that was terrified to be called upon. But I, I came across very confident. I came across you know, very capable in many things, but for that I wasn't. So I didn't want to be put in that position of failing. Whereas this time round, I took a deep breath and I went, well, I'll just be a mistake. I'll, you know, and, um, and I think I did miss and make a mistake. And I don't even know if you edited it out. I went, Oh, well, that's not quite right. Let's just start that over again. I did that a couple of times and it was okay. It's okay for us to be imperfect. Things can still be beautiful, even if it's, they're not perfect. Yes, absolutely. And I think if I, it, it helps us to be, um, I, I find it makes me more relatable. Yeah. When I am, it's an actual do over in the moment. Yeah. You know, or just kind of said, oh, I'm not, not quite sure that came out the way I intended or, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Right. So the transparency, I think, is very endearing. Hmm. So I have to yeah. share that as well from my experience and also my experience of you. Hmm. And another just kind of a part B yeah. of this question is, have you watched or listened to your audio or video reading of your story yet? Hard no. <laughs> <laughs> None of them. None of them. None of them. No, I think maybe a couple. I go back because I love seeing it because I have lived the experience. I, you know, I'm, yeah, no, I rarely go back and watch. I'm like moving on to the next one. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Uh, I'm understanding for sure. <laughs> but, so of course, you know, you know what, what I'm going to say next, right? And no, okay. You don't, no. um, is what's coming to me is, if that was a double dog dare for you to read it, it's a <laughs> triple dog dare okay. for you to watch it and to listen to it. Because yes, the editing of the audio is slightly different than the video. So you'll you'll get two different uh, kind of perspectives. Interpretations. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Of, yeah. Of and I you... guess the triple dare is to go and listen to it without criticizing myself. Although I can learn how to, well, next time I can do this better, but let that take be its take, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And okay. also too, it'll help define, is there even just a thin, thin layer of that mud left, you know, of, oh, of that particular, you know, belief or whatever. I know yeah. it's, you know, like as Likely. you've analogized, you know, yeah. Our, our challenges is it's like macrame, right? And is this yeah. not ready to be, you know, unraveled or undone, you know, so that you can kind of move yeah. on, you know, to yeah, the next. I'm going to throw in there at the beginning, you asked me um, what's changed in your wisdom. I'm going to add something else in is I found new mud puddles to play in. <laughs> <laughs> found I make new mud pies you make new mud mud pies mud puddles exactly yeah. and yeah. as soon as you said puddles I actually was thinking that the puddles are more fluid 
Yeah. So, you know, and mud pies would be okay, but at least they're mud pies. It's not like you feeling like your eyes and your heart and your soul are, you know, have this mud. You didn't it's even not know. A pit. It's right. yeah, that's what I would say is I you didn't know what you didn't know to a puddle. Now exactly. as I step on splash, and sometimes it takes a while to look down and go, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh it's no, not you again. Like, <laughs> exactly. So those listening, I'm actually looking down and looking under my armpit and, you know, down my bra and like, shit, like, like that, that right. <laughs> the mud, the stress of life lands in various spots in us. Yeah. Right. And as you mentioned, yeah, in your story as well, it's in unseen places, just like a day at the beach, you know, where sand ends up in places that oh, <laughs> how long is that going to be? You're taking your brain suit off and you're like, where does it come from and where is it sticking? I have a beach in my belly button. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. More graphically other places as well. But yes, I know. Right. Being a nurse, yes. <laughs> I'm a little more topical. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay so I just as, as as host today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I just wanted to uh, kind of bring things to, you know, kind of the, the, the top three pearls of wisdom based on our time today. And also just in general, if there's anything that we missed, maybe there's something else that you want to add in. So your top three pearls of wisdom today. Awesome. Now in the book, oh, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. In the book, I actually talk about three things like be daring um dare to adventure right mm -hmm. dare to i should have these memorized dare to that's adventure. okay i've got them here love so okay. the first one is to graciously accept support okay let's start with that one okay. i have sort of three in there so graciously accept support and um I'm going to, I'm going to back it up because I have three that I use. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do multi-part. I'm going to put threes under the threes here. So what helped me get through that period of time in my life was that I adapt, I adopted the attitude of gratitude. So being grateful for things really shifted my mindset. Like it is uh, scientifically proven. We have scans, we have all sorts of things that show when we engage in, in gratitude practices, we can shift our in, entire beings. But akin with that was um, being generous. And I know that uh, again, especially women and, and so forth, we're just, we're so generous, but it's be generous with self and others. And, and, and that self is so important. If we're not generous with ourselves, it's, you know, not going in there and then celebration. We want to bring that energy in. But then I started looking at that generosity. It's not just about giving and being giving to yourself is that if, if receiving is not part of the coin, then somebody's, somebody's generosity is being cut off, whether it's your own or somebody else's. So when we learn to just generously, uh, graciously accept, simply say, thank you. We then get the support we need and we have allowed somebody else to express their generosity. Mm. So that would be my three within that one. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. And the next one is? Uh, be open to love and adventure. Awesome. So this one truly that's, you know, what this chapter was about is that after I, I had a good four years of wanting to just be on my own and, and heal my own hurts, you know, going through something like this is like grief. So no matter what it is that trips us up, my focus was on getting myself happy. And, and so being open to love, here's, I want to explain this one a bit more is that I was so stuck on, I wasn't getting love from that particular man that I had blinders on and I was missing when I turn around all the love that was pouring into me in a universal way from my children, from other family members, from um, friends. And just, so when I opened up to love, and I filled my cup up that way, and I exchanged in just having healthy relationships 
in my entire circle, then that is when I then was ready to open myself up to romantic love. Mm -hmm. And I know so often people are scared, like, well, I don't want to get hurt again. And I'm like, well, like, what are you going to do? Bubble wrap yourself for the rest of your life? Well, that's just it is, yeah, the protection, whether it's the mud or, you know, some other that suit of armor you talked about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was something that, you know, Mm -hmm. like, if you have been hurt, okay, get heal yourself, like get get some help and and start feeling good. And then open yourself up for love because being in relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or just healthy relationships for other friends and families, Mm -hmm. like when we open ourselves up to love, that is beautiful. Right. And, and when I say love and adventure to me, and this gets into, I do a whole talk on what, what does it mean to be daring? Like I've expanded on this chapter and do whole talks separately, the difference between being brave and daring. And so that's it. So adventure to me, engaging in a romantic relationship was an adventure, you know, or going traveling with my friends and just my love of meeting new people in new places. So th- I, I see those two akin. Mm-hmm. The third one is. The third you one, are not the mud. Well, we've been talking about that. So that the stresses of life that, you know, whether you are dealing with what we call the grungies, you know, that, the embarrassment that need to be right, perfectionism, hurt, sad, resentment, all of the things that when you say those words, you go, oh, and your whole energy drains, we can flip it. And there's techniques and, and whether you're doing it on your own, or you're going to courses or classes or working with a practitioner like myself or, or Sandy, you for different finding your voice, um, we can help you in that circumstance, flip it to the energizing side. And, and I liken that to washing off the mud. If you've fallen in a pit of grief or sadness or ill health, you know, or menopause madness, whatever it is, that is your mud, there is help to wash that off. You are not the mud. Your beautiful light is underneath that. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. That's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And I just, again, I I want to acknowledge you for acknowledging yourself. Thank you. In this awareness, because again, I think that is other than, you know, love conquers all and it does love always wins. Awareness is everything. Yeah. So the more that we can be aware of challenges, beliefs, Things that I, you know, that we identify with, as you mentioned, the grungies, things, you know, that we keep us safe because it's the devil we know. Yes. Right? That kind of thing. Right. So it's, it's, uh, you know, I'd love to have you do something on brave and daring. That okay. would be fantastic. So yeah. oh, we're now, well, we're getting it to beyond triple dog dares, but um, <laughs> more of a suggestion, but that kind of thing is just recognizing, you know, the understanding beneath it all is your brilliance Mm. and moving through the things that we need to do to live our happiest most excellent life not perfect and as transparent as possible i think that's i believe that that's where we're all headed so i i just magic is exactly i get it for sure i love i just i have to say i just have to pull out i got like the good goosebumps when you just talked about the awareness, like love covers all, but awareness, what awareness does is it relieves us from having to be perfect. It doesn't matter. Like we can be in a bad mood. We can be upset. We can do that. But if we have awareness and observation of it, we can transcend that so much faster in the moment. Exactly. And we're being, yes, we're applying grace to ourselves for the mistake Absolutely. Yep. Yay. Oh my goodness, we're brilliant. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> oh, thank well, you. Congratulations. So much. <laughs> You're so you were, welcome. You're awesome. I, I'm I'm sitting here and you know me, right? Like I get an idea and I, it's like zing going on. I'm like, I think we should do this on a regular basis where we just like co-host and just have a theme. Maybe we can ask people to, you know, go and subscribe and, and send us a topic you want to hear about and we'll bounce this back and forth. Exactly. 
Yes, for sure. And I think, and we had talked earlier just before this show about uh, the daring to, and uh, in my experience of you and knowing you, I just wanted to share that my biggest uh, acceptance of daring to in my life was relocating from Calgary, Alberta to yes. Victoria, BC. So uh, we can, you know, we'll go into that more, maybe another time, but at, you know, really it's, it's a, it was a, it was following my heart. My head did not know what was going on. And mm -hmm. by the time it caught up, I was already here and yeah. I had, you know, kind of released 80% of my household goods. And, yeah. you know, so uh, my heart is still in the lead. It's it's just just ahead. Uh, but that. anyway, I think that's a foreshadow, right? Because we did <laughs> your part one, the big move we need, you said in the spring, and it's springtime now, Yay. I think, book and do the uh, part two, the move. Yeah, and we can, you know, yeah, we can do that anytime in the next, you know, few weeks. I think that'd be super fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sandy. And thank you for listening. And I wish you all a magical day. See you soon. Thanks for joining us today. You've been listening to the Fabulous at 50 podcast with your host, Joanne Neuaduck. Join us again for more inspirational interviews on topics that matter to you. If you like what you've heard on today's episode, check out the liner notes or to learn more about this vibrant community that celebrates women over 50, please visit fabulousat50.com. That's www.fabulousat50.com.